Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's July 6th. These are your headlines. The best of 10 years. That's how they're describing the tuna fishing east of Cape Cod this week. We also heard about a dramatic increase in the fluke fishing off of South County, Rhode Island. And if you're a striper guy, you may want to think about heading up to Maine. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, i got a couple news items to throw you away. And the first one is a reminder, and that is that Connecticut sea bass season will reopen this Saturday, July 8th. So we had a two-week closure there. Going to reopen on the 8th. You can start fishing for sea bass again as of that morning. Just wanted to make sure you guys knew and remembered that. Uh, another reminder I want to throw you away is that members of the fisherman team will be headed down to ICAST next week and we will be bringing you videos of all the new fishing innovations that are coming out this year. And speaking of uh, ICAST innovations, let's get a little sneak peek now at some of the innovations coming from Yuzuri, or at one of them. This is their new super fluorocarbon. Check it out. Hey guys, it's Chris from Yuzuri, and I got something really special for you that's coming out of ICAST 2023 and it's super fluoro. So this is our brand new fluorocarbon for the US market. It comes in sizes four through 300 pound to cover any of your needs, fresh and salt water. Made in Japan, where all the best fluorocarbons are made, but at a more affordable price point. I know I've been testing this and our pro staff have been testing this for over six months now. Just today alone, I caught my personal best striped bass at 56 pounds on 30 pound test super fluoro. If you want to get bites and be able to land your personal best, you got to use quality products and that's what this is. The thing, the, one of the best things about this when it comes out later this summer, very affordable price. Anywhere for, based on the size, anywhere from 30 to 60% lower price per yard than the current industry leader. Guys, if you want a quality fluorocarbon for an affordable price that you can catch your personal best on, Super Fluoro is the one for you. Check it out. Now let's take a quick look at what's going on in the Dreamboat Challenge this week. This week we had four fluke hit the top 10. Ciro Tedisco of West Babylon, New York started the bidding with this 7.26 pounder landing him in ninth place. Lori Crinchin of Holtzville, New York had this awesome 8.8 .8 pounder that was good enough for seventh place. John Wallace from Cobalt, Connecticut stands in sixth place with his flatfish that weighed in at nine pounds even. And the biggest fluke of the week belongs to Michael Carbone of Berlin, New Jersey. This fourth place beast weighed in at 10.25 pounds. The most important fish of the week was this 15.52 pound third place bluefish caught by Bobby Cifarelli of Branford, Connecticut. This gator bluefish launches Bobby into the lead spot in the contest. The top three looks like this. Luke Citrarelli drops to third place with 18 points. Eddie Terrabile falls into second place with 21 points. And Bobby Cifarelli leads the world with 25 overall points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new 21 foot Steigercraft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. And finally, we'll wrap things up in the news portion of this with a contest which is ongoing. Still getting lots of photos, still no clear winner though. So if you get out, get out there, challenge yourself to take a really good photo. Uh, you got a good shot at winning this thing. I'm going to give away a darter made by me. I'm going to give away some no life bait needed paddle tails. And I'm going to give on a little package of lures from Game On. Uh, so, again, it's pretty simple. It's got to be a recently caught fish, and it's got to show you holding your fish. You can email them to danderson at thefisherman.com and just put a contest or giveaway in the subject line, or you can text them to the number on the screen. This one's going to wrap up on July 26th. We'll pick a winner right after that and uh, probably start another one. Uh, so get those photos in and we'll see who wins. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing. That nothing says no to fish bites. Moving over to the fishing reports portion of this thing. Um, man, the striper fishing up in Maine just seems to... <laughs> doesn't seems like it just doesn't want to quit. 
uh, seeing lots of really nice fish taken from the surf, seeing them taken on live eels, taken taken on plugs. Uh, saw some really big fish taken on flies up there this week. So, um, man, it really feels like that's the place to be right now if you're a striper guy. Uh, I guess there hasn't been the number of pogies that they typically see up there, but there's the mackerel are more than making up for it. They got harbor pollock, they got sand eels, and uh, the bite's been very good. Guys are doing well on live mackerel from the boats. Guys are chunking mackerel from the shore. Guys are getting throwing live eels. Guys are doing really well on SP minnows. Seen some needlefish uh, caught uh, stripers up there as well. Lots of action, lots of good fishing, and uh, it seems to be happening day and night. So uh, very, very good striper fishing up in Maine right now. Dropping back down into Massachusetts, uh, sounds like Plum Island slowed down a little bit, but still good fishing up there. And for a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to James Jukes. Well, just doing a little recuperation over a long weekend. Spent quite a bit of time out in the surf. Uh, wasn't too fruitful. I had one really nice fish. Uh, went around 35 pounds, my biggest one of the year so far, which was good. Uh, most of the other guys out there, they're doing okay. Nothing spectacular this weekend. I think it was uh, some of the tides were a little off. Uh, or maybe they weren't just getting out enough because of the long weekend. A lot of family routines being done over the weekend. Uh, but. Uh, everything else is going pretty well. It's a grind out there, not gonna lie. Uh, the fishery is definitely uh, feeling the effects of everything going on at once. So just keep at it and do your things out there. Excuse me, the boat guys out uh, half mile out or so and beyond have been doing really well with a lot of big fish. Um, but not a lot of guys have been seeing smaller fish, so uh, it's not not great as far as uh, incoming fish for the next few seasons. But you know that's for another time, anyways. Anyways, hope everybody had a happy Fourth of July. Uh, freshwater guys are still getting some pike in the Merrimack and the carp fishing at night has been doing well. Uh, didn't hear much from the largemouth guys this week. Uh, but I suspect uh, they were doing okay. Uh, so everybody in the whole area is just doing their thing. I beat the sand a lot, so I see a fewer fish than most guys that are hitting the rocks. Uh, those deeper waters are definitely paying off for them. Uh, I just avoid crowds. I can't stand crowds. But anyways, uh, hope everybody has their gear polished up and ready to uh, get out again for this full moon that's happening right now. Uh, we got some nice minus tides the next few days, so you better be getting out and doing your thing. Anyways, Dave, thanks for that flat guy, glide. It did well. There's a long stretch of shoreline from Cape Ann down to Plymouth where they're seeing a lot of really big bluefish. They seem to have moved in over the last 14 days, but they seem to really have started to pile in over the last five to seven days. These are big fish. You know, these are like nine to 14 pound bluefish, might be a few bigger ones in the mix. Um, and they're pretty widespread. I think the best way for you to try to uh, get in front of some of those fish is to find some bait. If you can find a school of bait, very good chance some of those bluefish are gonna be around. Now, perhaps as a result of all these bluefish moving in, the striper fishing along that stretch has waned a little bit. Uh, seemed to be smaller fish taking place of some of those really big ones that they were catching uh, a couple weeks ago. And overall, the bite has just sort of tempered a little bit. It's come down just a touch. Uh, jumping across the canal, uh, out to the Cape, one of the biggest things that we're hearing about right now, or probably, probably the biggest story that we're hearing in that region, is just about the tuna fishing. Uh, I've heard multiple people say now that it's the best they've seen in 10 years. A lot of uh, wreck sized fish, a lot of good stand-up sized fish, you know, 50 to 60 inch fish. And um, it's been good from, you know, Jeffrey's Ledge, down to Stellwagen, and then, you know, a bunch of those other hot spots uh, along that area, the Crab Ledge and the Sword, among others. For a little bit more on that and some of the surf fishing that's going on on the Outer Cape, let's toss it over now to Ian and Phil from Goose Hummock Shop. Okay, report. Yes. Tuna scene is my kind of fun place. Very, very good. Big fish, a little bit near. 
um, small fish are everywhere and they're good size small fish in so much as you know last year's 42 inch fishes are now 52 55 inches um, this time of year it's my favorite time of year really um, albeit I normally do it in the fall at the other end of it is you can run and gun and you can cast at these guys okay um, the casting's been really good Ron Zizas work really well the strategics work really well uh, boys down at Unreal are absolutely Unreal Kitchen. You know, Chris and Nick are killing it on the IMS laws. Jack Finn will do it. But it is a surface bite, so it's really good fun. Chase them, catch them, be respectful of everybody else on the water. Have a great time. The giant fishing um, will come on. But the bite is all the way down the east. So it really is. It's from P Town down to the islands. Um, canyons, a lot of people going next week. Um, there's a weather window going in just before the 4th. Haven't got details of that. It's a couple of weeks ago. It was really strong. So tuna fishing is fantastic. Recreationally, go at it. I think it'd be great. Regs are the same as last year. So recreational, two unders, one over. So that's two fish over 27, under 48, 148, to under 73, okay? Look after your fish. Have a great time. That's tuna town. Yep. So like I said, stripers have been crazy. Uh, a lot of bluefish have been caught in the last couple of weeks. Um, been convenient times too. So we've been going right after work. Usually as soon as it gets dark, it's been pretty much lights out. Been doing a lot of work on the Yozuris, obviously the SP. And then some of these fish are like, you know, average slot size fish. So I've been fishing a lot of the GT eel uh, paddle tails. So been awesome. Just catch a release has been phenomenal. Um, makes it no headlamp needed, no pliers needed, you know, no trouble with my thumb. So been no trouble thoroughly you. enjoying those guys and putting them to good use follow me so the beach seems good really Boats, good. i saw one of the charter captains at hammock this morning he said off the race was phenomenal so the, the bass bite generally is really really strong mm -hmm. um tog little samson's been catching tog in yep. the bay so he's been catching some tog um there's plenty of fish out there guys so anyways the fourth this weekend we've got a lovely giveaway to celebrate the English Independence Day. Um, and yeah, get out there, come in the store, get stocked up, get on the beaches, have fun on the beaches. You don't need a boat. Um, yeah. And if you're out on the boat, have fun. The fish is phenomenal. Okay, yes. happy fourth, guys. Happy fourth. Peace. they said in the uh, in their video the boat fishing has been very good off of race points also still very good off of monomoy so you got two hot zones for stripers if you got a boat uh, definitely worth checking out both of those places on the fluke side of things eh, Massachusetts hasn't really been you know blowing people's hair back uh, haven't been getting a lot of reports from Nantucket Shoals not sure why that is uh, the fluke that I am hearing about is coming from Vineyard Sound and Nantucket Sound and it's been, I would call it, okay. Uh, a lot of shorts and uh, not that many keepers. But if you can just kind of bounce from hump to bump to shoal, uh, I think you're gonna, and don't put in too much time at any one of those places, you're probably gonna have your best shot at maybe putting a limit together. Sea bass fishing is still very good uh, in that region all the way out through the Elizabeth. Some of the best sea bass fishing though has been happening out in Westport. I've been talking to Jason Colby and uh, he's been doing very well there. He's also been getting some nice fluke uh, here and there. So that's something to, uh, to sort of focus on, especially if you're a bottom fisherman. Striper-wise, uh, we had another wave of stripers move into Buzzards Bay, and uh, they've kind of made it up into the canal over these last couple days. Um, been, some, been some really good mid-morning blitzes in the canal, especially at the extreme west end, um, and some really nice fish taken. For a little bit more on what's gone on at the canal this week, let's toss it over now to East End Denny. Good morning, Dave. It's a wet, windy morning here in the canal. I'm holding my hand on this tripod to uh, try to prevent the camera from shaking too much in the wind. Uh, there's an east tide behind me that hopefully is going to produce pretty soon. Uh, it was raining so hard this morning at 3 a.m. that I didn't think there was any rain left. So hopefully, uh, hopefully there isn't. So. By the way, congratulations on finding that Native American artifact next to your truck. That's terrific. I've been trying to find an arrowhead like that since I was a little kid. 
So good for you. That's, it was perfectly shaped. You know, you see something like that, it makes you think uh, back, you know, how, how many uh, deer were killed with that through two, three hundred years ago? How many Native American families were sustained with the use of that? Of course, we'll never know, but it's nice that you can hold on to a piece of history like that. So things have been kind of tough on the canal recently. The fishing hasn't been that great, but notwithstanding the lull, uh, some guys have caught some nice fish. Vito Masico, who's a corrections officer at Sing Sing Prison on uh, the Hudson River in New York, uh, caught a nice fish. He, he uh, of course, that's a famous prison where Luc Lucky Luciano was uh, housed and some other famous uh, criminals. But Vito lives on uh, Long Island, and he and his father, Vinny, come to the canal as often as they can. And uh, Vito caught a 38-pounder, and Vinny caught a 30-pounder. Uh, they were both throwing Green Mac Savages into a West Tide. And they're both great guys and terrific fishermen. So whenever they come to the canal, it makes uh, the place a better place to wet a line. So I'm happy for them. And uh, the other day, uh, Bill and the Grill Prudo was fishing with Polly the Painter Gravina. They both got into a surface bite, uh, caught about 10 bass apiece, 30 to 36 inches. Uh, one of the lures they were using was the Mystic um, Glide Bait, uh, Chartreuse colored. And then Bill clipped on a uh, yellow Jobo guppy and caught a 41 inch. And not long after he released the 41 inch, he hooked into a fish much bigger than that. And he fought the fish to fruition, brought it to his feet. And as soon as the fish got to Billy's boots, a huge seal moved in, grabbed the fish and took off. So Bill had to break his line so he didn't get spooled by the seal. Um, seals continue to be the bane of fishermen on the canal and probably everywhere. So. Uh, and, you know, there's one big seal we call Bubba. I think the one that got Billy's uh, fish might have been one of Bubba's cousins. He was pretty big, too. Um, so uh, the, uh, the canal uh, is still being worked on. There's some construction jobs being done. Army Corps of Engineers are doing repairs on different parking lots. And uh, this week, uh, they're going to be working on the uh, north and south uh, service roads, uh, weather permitting. Um, so, you know, uh, 40 inches has become the gold standard for uh, catching a striped bass. Uh, if you catch a 40 inch fish, you're doing pretty well. And so um, that's kind of, uh, guys measure fish more than they weigh them. My readers like to know how much a fish weighs. And so, let me just hold this so it doesn't shake too much. But, but So I carry a small scale on my belt. But most guys just measure a fish, and that's become more prevalent in the last few years with the advent of the slot system, uh, because you, if you catch a 50-pounder, you can't take it to a tackle shop to get it weighed because you'd kill the fish. And the only fish you can take out of the, out of, out of, well, the only stripes you can take anywhere, um, at least in Massachusetts, I'm not sure about every other state, but uh, are slot fish, 28 to less than 31 inches. And... Um, so more, most guys just carry a small scale, I mean, excuse me, a small uh, tape measure, and they measure fish. So 40 inches has kind of become the gold standard. And so I'm going to uh, introduce a new feature to the uh, fishermen today, and I'm going to read you a list of guys who have caught at least one 40-inch fish this season. And uh, now this fish, th this list is not complete because I couldn't possibly know everybody on the canal, but... Uh, but, and as a matter of fact, before I read it, let me tell you that if you want to get on this list, it's the 40-inch honor roll. This is not an academics honor roll, but this is for great fishermen. And so we've got a 40-inch fish. So if you want to contact me to tell me you caught a 40-inch fish, you, you already caught one this year. Um, or if you want to send me a, a picture of a nice catch or, or just give me some uh, canal fishing news, you can contact me at my email, eastendeddy789 at yahoo.com. That's E-A-S-T-E-N-D-E-D-D-I-E-789 at yahoo.com. And uh, the 789, incidentally, stands for the uniform numbers of Mantle, Yastrzemski, and Williams. And if you don't know which Williams, go to your room and stay there, because <laughs> I'm talking about the greatest hitter who ever lived, the left fielder for the Boston Red Sox, Ted Williams, who's the last man to hit 400. So contact me with any news, and I'll be happy to review it. And so this is a list. This is the 40-inch honor roll for the canal. Guys have caught at least one 40-inch. Some of these guys have caught several. John Doble, Bill on the Grill Prudo, Ed Bresniak, Bo McKinnon, Jim Kelly, John the Chef Schmidt, 
Dancing Ben Fomino, Chuck Franks, Jumpin' Joe England, Bill Costi Costello, Alex Brucas, Sudden Sam Lozo, Reese Peanut Butter Cup Griff Griffiths, Mashpee Mike Larea, Paulie the Painter, Gravina, Vito and Vinny Masico, Mike Derrick, Rick Easton, Tim Hollywood Petraca, Kenny Nevins, Tony Boazzo, Joe Gray, Bob Ware, and Glenn Lindsay. So congratulations to all those guys. Those are, those are nice catches. And so uh, my, uh, my tip of the week is just to, so you be aware of an unusual circumstance when a, when a cruise ship goes by. I was fishing with uh, the, the water just, just goes out from under your feet. And I was fishing one time with uh, New Hampshire Bob and we're both plugging uh, into an east tide and uh, a, a huge cruise ship goes by in the dock. It's like three in the morning. It's all lit up. And I don't know how many stories high it is, but that's a big ship. And so I said to Bobby, I said, you know, wouldn't it be great if one of us hooked into a fish when the ship is going by and the people can see us catching a fish? Because I wasn't thinking it's 3 a.m. Everybody in that ship is sleeping except the captain. And the only people awake are canal rats like Bob and I. And so, uh, but, but as luck would have it, Bob hooked into a fish and uh, a nice fish and he, and he caught it. I was the only one that saw him catch it, but that's okay. But what I wanted to tell you is that these cruise ships have engines that are so powerful that they suck the water right away from your feet. I was standing, I wear 16 inch boots. I was standing in about uh, a foot of water, about 12 inches of water. And when this ship went by, those engines just sucked the water straight out. It looked like a science fiction movie. All of a sudden there's no water at my feet. It was amazing. And it just happened so fast. It looked like a low tide in, uh, in fast motion. And uh, so, and then when the ship goes by, all the water comes roaring back in. But it's pretty impressive, pretty amazing to see. So if that happens to you, just be aware, aware that it's, it's just the engines of the cruise ship. So until next time, catch a big one. Jumping over into Rhode Island, um, striped bass fishing has, it's changed. Um, you know, it's been really warm. I'm sitting here sweating right now. And uh, the water temperatures have come up noticeably. And I think that's moved some fish around. The surf guys have been struggling a lot more over these last seven days than they were prior to that. Uh, however, the boat guys are doing very well. Newport's producing a lot of fish and Block Island's producing a lot of fish. But before we dive too deeply into Rhode Island, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecki and get a little East Bay rundown. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys. Uh, just wanted to wish, wish you all and hope you all had a uh, happy 4th of July. And... Uh, Things are pretty good if you're uh, ground fishing in Mount Hope Bay this week. Um, I had several outings on my boat, um, and we did really well with the uh, sea bass and scup. Uh, fluke not too good, lots of short fish. Um, I did get some reports that uh, there were a couple of keepers caught more towards the Bristol Harbor area. Um, I didn't actually get into the Bristol Harbor. I stayed out at the Mount Hope Bridge. Um, I fished anywhere from 29 feet to 70 feet, and uh, we had all kinds of stuff. Uh, we actually got into some uh, a huge school of dogfish. Every single drop for probably a, like 20 minutes, I couldn't get away from the dogfish. Uh, fun to catch. I uh, got a couple over four feet long. So uh, fun to catch, but, you know, they mess up your leaders and tangle everything and roll up in your lines. But uh all in all, Mount Hope Bay has actually been good with fishing. Uh, from I've got squatigue, I've got sea bass over 20 inches, um, I've got scup up to 16 and a half inches, um, so some good pork chops. Um, all in all, I think it's only going to continue to get better and I'm hoping to see the uh, bigger fluke move in. Uh, I know they just haven't come down that scone yet and I haven't got up there to chase them, I've been just targeting everything from Church's Cove to the mouth of the Kickamute River, uh, right around Spar Island, and pretty much up to the Mount Hope Bridge and a little bit further over. Um, but uh, th there's been several boats there, and uh, I've been talking to all the guys on the boats, and they're all doing the same. So uh, squid's been working, clam tongue, if you got that for bait, um, we've been doing really well. So hopefully it continues to get better, and uh, hey, uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Hopefully things are better. And uh, have a good week. Tight lines. Newport has still been one of the, probably the best area in, you know, this side of Block Island Sound. So uh, mainland Rhode Island, if you're going to be looking for stripers, the best places to be right now are between Beaver Tail and Newport. Um, seen a lot of really nice fish coming off of Brenton Reef. 
And these fish are being caught a lot of different ways. Guys are getting them on soft plastics. Guys are getting them on live eels. There have been, still been some top water action, especially on those snottier, cloudier days. Uh, so you've got that. If you really want to just focus on catching a monster, you're going to want to head out to Southwest Ledge. We've seen multiple 50 pound fish come off the ledge uh, over the last week, and that's something that's just going to continue. I mean, history has proven it. It's been happening for, geez, I don't even know, at least 15 years. And um, we, we all know. We all know it's going to continue to happen. Some of the better news that we've heard this week is that the fluke fishing in South County has really started to light up. Uh, limits have been a lot more common. Keeper sized fish have been mixing in and the ratio has been coming down. So instead of you know catching 20 fish to your one keeper, it's, it's come down considerably. For a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to Captain John Lee from JL Charters. Hey Dave, John Lee, JL Charters. We've had a busy week over here in Point Judith. Lots of half day fluke and sea bass trips. Um, the fluke's been good for us, kind of 42 feet of water. We're getting them down the south shore, but also east of Point Judith a little bit. Um, the sea bass have been tricky, but the past few days we're finding jumbo sea bass kind of where they should be. Um, it looks like they're spawning, so they're kind of bunched up. So once you find them, you can actually drill on them pretty good. Uh, no idea about striped bass. There's been blues around, but I haven't been over to the island, so I got nothing to report on that. Anyway, check in with you next week. Take care. The other thing that's getting people excited is the bluefin tuna fishing south of Block Island. These guys are mostly heading, you know, 15 plus miles south of the island, but the tuna bite is now really starting to fire up. You got some guys making canyon runs too, getting some big eyes, getting some yellowfin. Uh, so the offshore fishing has officially bloomed, and uh, we've got some good weather days coming. Uh, today's a good weather day, so uh, I expect to get even more reports next week. But um, if you've been kind of waiting to fill the tank and make that long offshore run. The time is now. Um, whether you go to the Cape or you fish south of Block, the bluefin are in, and uh, by all indications, the bite has been good, and it should continue to get better. And the last thing in Rhode Island we'll talk about is just along the South County beaches. Uh, very good scup fishing, really, I mean, throughout most of Rhode Island. Uh, anywhere on the ocean front, whether you're fishing from the shore or from a boat, these fish are 5 to 40 feet of water, a lot of nice fish being caught and just very fast action. And then still very good striper fishing uh, from, Watch Hill, from the Watch Hill Reefs and uh, you know heading out toward fishes as well. And that's what I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. Jumping over into Connecticut, just like the South County beaches, we are seeing a, an increase in fluke activity behind fishes. So Isabella and some of those other places where uh, you know, where are some of the historically best places to fish for fluke in the eastern half of Long Island Sound. They are finally starting to come to life and uh, I finally feel like I can tell you it's definitely worth the ride. Uh, of course that doesn't guarantee that you're going to catch keepers. There's still a lot of short fish around but the good news is, is that more fluke have moved in and the action has been good. Um, inside the race, guys are crushing bass and bluefish. Uh, most of the bass are around the slot so somewhere between like 26 and 36 inches um, and if you put in enough time you're going to thread the needle and get yourself a keeper here and there. A lot of bluefish in the area too including some really big ones. Uh, the best big bass fishing that I'm hearing about is coming from around the Connecticut River. It's been that way for a couple weeks now. Uh, seeing some really nice fish coming off those points outside the river and all those reefs like Bartlett's and Hatchet's. Uh, for a little bit more on that let's toss it over now to uh, Captain Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. Hey, what's up, guys? For this week's first report, the striped bass have transitioned out of their spring holding areas, and they're moving out into the areas where um, you can expect them to be all summer long. There's still a lot of big striped bass around and slot-sized striped bass. We've even seen a few schoolie blitzes on the surface as well, so that's really good. It's shaping up to be a good summer. The reefs out in uh, East Long Island Sound are loaded with bait. There's butterfish, squid, and sand eels on all those reefs, and the bunker is still really thick. Bluefish are still thick out on the deeper reefs as well. They've thinned out of the rivers, 
and the black sea bass fishing should be uh, starting to improve in some of their uh, summertime areas. So I will start looking for them uh, probably within the next week or so. That's it. Good luck. Now we're going to head up the Connecticut River Valley a little bit and check in with Rowan Lytle. Hey everybody. Uh, with the immense deluge of rain the last couple days, the Connecticut River and most of its tributaries have come up substantially. Uh, and that's going to make fishing the main stem of the river very difficult for the foreseeable future. It'll drop fairly quickly, I'm guessing, as long as we don't keep getting rain. There's some spotty showers and thunderstorms in the forecast over the next few days. Uh, but otherwise, it's supposed to just be fairly hot and humid. Um, this is good, uh, and I'm going to feel like a broken record by the end of the summer, but this is pretty good catfish weather. Uh, and also very good for carp. Uh, a lot of the carp will push back up into the shallow backwaters, uh, like they do early in the spring when the river is particularly high. So expect to see some giant carp pushed up fairly shallow right now. Uh, and getting out of the main stem of the river and the raging current there is going to be a good idea anyway. Um, so look for, look for carp and channel catfish push back up into the backwaters. Uh, it's a good time to do some bait fishing. Uh, set up with carp, uh, doing some, some basically chumming uh, with ground bait, and then pack bait's probably one of the better methods. Uh, my friend Captain Noah Johnson's been doing that quite a bit lately. Um, that's sort of the European style method, and it seems to outproduce other strategies. So pack bait and uh, hair rigs are kind of the way to go if you want those bigger carp. Of course, I'll still be mostly fly fishing for them, both myself and with my clients. Uh, but get out there and look for some big carp. Good luck uh, in the high water, everyone. Now we'll head out of the Connecticut River, head a little west to Westbrook, and we'll check in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. Hey everyone, Matt here at Black Hall Outfitters in Westbrook with this week's fishing report. Uh, our river bite uh, has slowed down pretty tremendously this week. Um, the heat and the rain kind of cleared out a lot of the stripers that were hanging out in there. There are still a lot of bunker around in there if you'd like to cast it net some of those. Um, they are getting a little tougher to keep alive with the warmer water, but it is still possible. Outside of the rivers, we have a pretty fantastic striper bite going on on the local reefs and points. Um, three weighing those bunker, live swimming those bunker, um, doing the same thing with eels as well. Uh, big bunker spoons are also working, the big flutter spoons. Um, so anything you want out there, kind of your tried and true tactics, big top waters at the certain times, those are also working well. Uh, the fluke has slowed down and spread out a little bit. It's a bit inconsistent right now. We're not really sure where they're going to be at any given day. Um, there's been success at depths of 35 up to 65 plus. Our sea bass remains closed for another week. That'll open back up July 8th. And we are getting a few more reports of good porgy fishing as well from both boat and shore. So. The summer fishing continues getting into some more real summer patterns at this point. Um, still tremendous fishing here in Connecticut and uh, we're looking forward to seeing it continue. Good luck out there. Now, as we talked about um, in the intro, the or in the news portion actually, the black sea bass season is going to reopen on Saturday. Some of the best areas to find sea bass in Connecticut are around the central part of the sound. So basically from like off Niantic Bay to off Westbrook. And when this season resumes, you're going to start finding those fish in 40 to 80 feet of water, probably more like 60 to 80 feet of water. And the ends of those reefs out there are very productive spots. You're going to be definitely going to find your sea bass out there, and you're going to find some big scup as well, or porgies, as you guys like to call them in Connecticut. In fact, the porgy fishing has been excellent across the entire state, whether you're fishing from shore, paddleboard, kayak, boat, doesn't matter. Um, Find, find yourself some structure, throw yourself some bait down there, or maybe some, uh, some of the little fish bites, and um, you're going to do well on porgies. Still hearing about some weak fish that are being caught, mostly on like fluke rigs or porgy rigs. Um, fish are in deeper water now, but it's just been an exceptional year for weak fish, and that's continuing. And we're seeing some really big stripers coming out of that area from like Clinton, Milford, Norwalk. Uh, a lot of nice fish out in that 50 foot line. Guys getting them chunking, guys getting them eeling. It's mostly been a night bite, but there has been some top water action. And there's been some really good surf catches in that region too, because a lot of those bunker that were out in the Western Sound seem to have, uh, you know, decided that they really like the inshore waters of the Western Sound. So surf guys are getting in on it, seeing some fish up into the 30 pound range for the surf guys. And the boat guys are doing it too with live bunker, chunk bunker, and, you know, bigger plugs like the dock or a big metal lip. 
For more on that and a few other fisheries that are going on in the Western Sound, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. It's the first week of July after July 4th. Me and Lauren are gonna head out, fish some of our deeper water reefs, three-way and live bunker. The bass bite's still been good. During the daytime, I would definitely concentrate on some deeper water reefs, diamond jigging, you know, the northwest side of 11B and the deeper parts has been good. We've seen fish up to 30 pounds this week. And then shallow around the oil islands have been good, you know, first light, sunset, and then into the dark. Guys throwing dock lures, you know, swimming plugs, sunset and dusk has been really good. The morning bite's been good. It starts tapering off now. They're starting to get in that summer mode. So usually when the sun's up after the horizon, they'll start slowing down unless you've got an overcast day. And to our west, they're still getting fish on the troll. I would say 32A to Captain's Island in the deeper water part. And then to our east, that middle ground's still been hot. Locally, the fluke bite, you know, it, it's, it's not great, but people are getting them. It was good for a week or two and it's starting to slow down a little. So you really got to work the areas. Places like 26, 24, squid spearing is your best bet. And then some gulp, people like fluke bellies, sea robin strips, try it all. If you do catch one, hit a man overboard button to keep pounding that area. The porgy bite's strong, it should just really pick up now as the water's warm inshore. Guys are getting them from the beaches and the piers, and then from the boat or deep and shallow water reefs. Remember, clam chum always brings the fish to the boat and it's a good way to fill your bag limit. And then um, I would say the tuna fishing, you know, it's mostly a troll bite. The dump area, Suffolk has been decent. You know, the guys are getting them first light on the jig around the life, but most people heading out right now are definitely getting them on the troll. And then in the canyons, the dip, West Atlantis, we've seen some really good big eyes this past week. Thanks and good luck. That's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully they're going to inspire you to get out there. It's beautiful. You know, it's summertime. It's time to be fishing. you got these long, long days too, whether you want a freshwater fish, saltwater fish, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, you got to take advantage. This is the best time of the year, and um, it's a great time to live in New England. Let's get out there and catch some fish, take some photos, send them in to me, and you might even win something. And uh, one last thing, if you're not a subscriber to our magazine, I highly recommend heading over to thefisherman.com and check out what we've got going on. You're going to see we have three editions. We have a New Jersey, Delaware, we've got a Long Island, we've got a New England edition. That's my edition. And we cover all the fishing in those regions. And we cover some travel stuff too. You might, we might talk about you know, going out to Pulaski. We might talk about going down to Costa Rica, I mean, Marina Pez Vela. Uh, we might do some Florida stuff. But our core is uh, are these are these different fisheries in this northern half of the Atlantic here um, and you know we, cover, we go heavy on stripers we go heavy on fluke we do sea bass and we cover all the other fishes you can think of really honestly and all the different ways that you can do it whether it's boat surf kayak you know stand up paddleboard it's all covered uh, and we've got reports to cover that entire region. I'm kind of rambling on with this one, but uh, at the very, you know, so go on, check it out. And uh, it's 30 bucks to subscribe. So you're going to get 12 issues sent to your house, and you're going to get 26 digital editions sent to your email box during the season. You're also going to get access to all three editions and all of their reports. So you can always keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on in fishing. If you're still not convinced, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.